Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a keyboard that I just randomly came across on Amazon the other day. I was browsing and this keyboard came up. Actually, I believe it came up during Prime Day. It might have been during Prime Day, I'm not sure, but I just took a look at it now. It's listed for $28, but it has a 20% off coupon. So it comes out to around roughly 23 bucks and change. And it's a 65% gasket mount um i think it's a wired only and they do have this is the x82 usuo master the x83 is the same one just in black it does look very familiar it kind of looks like a gmk 67 so that's part of the reason why it kind of grabbed my attention i was like let me give this a look and see if it's you know a wired version of it or if it's any good because the 23 dollars for a 65 percent if we can you know, if it's a decent keyboard, not a bad deal. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check out what's in the box of this Suo, Yu Suo Master X82. All right, before taking a look at the keyboard, I do like to take a look at what's in the box. We have a nylon braided USB-C to USB-A cable uh, with the ferrite um, magnet there. We have a standard switch and keycap port. And we have a, looks like bilingual user fold-out manual, which has all of the different functions. Um, it does have an email for after sale. Does not seem to make any mention of software though. So we'll have to see if that's actually an option for us. And here we are with the Yusu Master X82. Um, while it does, appear to be somewhat similar to the GMK 67. It is not, obviously this is a wired only. It has a Mac and Windows switch as well as the connector on this side, as opposed to on this side on the GMK 67. And while this is this one is not exactly the same as the GMK 67, it's a lot more similar to this one. This is the Warnier V-K66, which is basically a wired keyboard, but we can see the similarities here these definitely look like they came out of the same shop um so this one is roughly the same price about 25 dollars 24 dollars if i'm not mistaken so basically you've got the option in these two now granted the warmier does have what i would say are slightly better keycaps the legends are a little bit nicer they're a little bit bigger they're a little bit clearer but for the most part, you're dealing with a very similar kit. Um, so for under $30, you can select one with a knob or one without. We still do have to see if we have software for that, though, because software is quite important. Looking at it, we do have the two fold-down feet, so we're going to have three angles of typing. We do have a dedicated Windows and Mac switch, and we do have the uh, cap clock indicator and a but I would imagine it's either win mode or win lock indicator. And we also have the uh, sub legends or the soft legends that show us what the different options are. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got under the keys. All right, we do have a hot swap keyboard as the warmier is as well. So this is something we can always modify and make better, replace with some better switches because these are some red switches that are not lubricated and are quite pingy, though we are dealing with a PC plate. So you're probably not gonna hear that much of the ping. We do have a north facing PCB with five pin switch compatibility. Can't quite tell, but it doesn't look like there's much dampening between the plate and the PCB, if any at all. Oh yeah, there is. All right, I just missed it. All right, there is a very thin, I would say maybe silicone rubber between the plate and the PCB. But as you can see, it is a gasket mounted plate and it is PC. Now it does also look like we have some open cell foam down below the PCB. This is definitely one of those keyboards that I think that we're gonna be able to mod and make it sound and feel much more like a much better keyboard than it is 
Now this we could easily remove with either. I prefer to use non-acetone nail polish remover and just use the tiniest amount with a Q-tip. Um, some people like to use the magic erasers, though the magic erasers are technically like sandpaper, so they will take off some of the finish. But if you're not careful with the non-acetone um, nail polish remover, it can take off some of the, the uh, finish as well. I just think it's not as noticeable personally. Um, I do have a couple of videos on my channel showing how to do that. And we do have um, a pretty thin, pri primarily a plastic knob, but it is a... Um, it has, uh, I mean, it might be the cheapest aluminum kind of outside there, but it is a D-knob. It does have a collar. Uh, let's check out these keycaps really quick. They do appear to be, yeah, I think these are shine through keycaps. Yeah, these are shine through, so it's very likely that these are ABS keycaps, but I doubt we'd be able to actually find the specs on these. Let's see where this out. All right. So we're dealing with 1.4, which isn't that bad. But again, they are shining through, so it's very likely that they're going to be ABS keycap. So I will take a look to see if we could find those specs. Now let's go ahead and see what this looks like with the RGB on. Wow, that's actually not that bad. It is very bright, a lot brighter than I expected it to be. You can cycle through the effect. Oh, that, more like, that cycle through colors. So we can find, like, say, we like rainbow, and then we can switch over to individual colors. And it looks like it has how of about eight or nine different colors. And we have several different multicolor effects. Pretty standard uh, for most of these, most of the um, keyboards we find nowadays as far as RGB goes. Um, we do have the Sub Legends for a Mac on here. Obviously, like I said, we have a dedicated Windows and Mac switch on the back. But even a year ago, a keyboard like this would have been at least twice the price, if not more. The fact that these are coming down in price so significantly is just amazing. Now, this doesn't sound quite as good as a GMK67. So if you're not wanting to mod stuff and you just want to insert some switches and some keycaps, then the GMK67 is probably going to be a better choice for you. But this one is going to be able to be modded I, that I personally think would be comparable to a GM, GMK67. These are actually super easy to open as well. We just have the uh, plastic clips. You basically just want to get a, not a metal, the metal will scratch it. You want to get a plastic spudger, and slide around the perimeter to undo those clips. Do not try to remove the cover until all the clips have been unlatched. That way you can avoid breaking any of them. All right, so just like that, we can take it off. We see that we have the LEDs for the indicators there. We have the PC plate, and we have our daughter board. So, I mean, with this, as we can see, I mean, there's the gaskets. There's the layer in between. I mean, it's a decent PCB. We have flex cuts on the PCB. Looks like the PCB is screwed into the plate. The daughter board seems to handle both the USB-C connection as well as the knob functionality. But these keyboards, with very little effort, as you can see, can easily be opened and reassembled. It's a very, very basic keyboard, but it's not bad that it's simple, in my opinion. Be just the specs. Today, we're taking a look at the Yusu Master X82. The X83 is the same keyboard, but in black. This is a 65% wired mechanical keyboard with a knob. It comes with a gasket-mounted PC plate and a north-facing 3 and 5 pin hot swap compatible PCB though it does not include any hi-fi layers. It has minimal dampening between the plate and the PCB, as well as some below the PCB. It comes with stock red Wano switches. Also is preloaded with double-shot, shine-through, ABS, Cherry, Profile keycaps. 
This keyboard comes weighing in at 495 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 23 millimeters off the typing surface, while the back sits at 33, providing for a default typing angle of 8 degrees. Flipping out the first set of feet will raise the back up to 39 millimeters and change your typing angle to 11 degrees. Flipping out the final set of feet will raise the back up to 47 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to 15 degrees. This keyboard is available after coupon for $23.88 from Amazon.com. Links below. Well, it took me a second to find the software, even though the advertising on Amazon says controllable through software. Um, I had to jump through a few links and uh, I found it off the Spanish video link. I put it on my Dropbox. I've checked it. There's no viruses, but the software for this does not allow for any sort of function layer. It only allows rebinding of the top and only layer available. Um, it does have the selection of the different RGB effects. It does have per key RGB, factory reset, and a basic macro system. But other than that, it does not have a function layer. Now, seeing that, that's that to me is an issue. If you're not a 100% keyboard, if you're anything smaller, you have to have a function layer. It's just some people may be able to get by, but you need to be able to map the layers underneath in case there's keys that are not on the keyboard that the user needs. So that is a disappointing, that one minor thing, because I, I'm almost positive it's a software limitation that it's not a hardware limitation because just to store an extra layer shouldn't take more than, I would guess, 4K of ROM, if that, for a 65%. So the fact that it doesn't have that really just leaves me, because I mean, like I said, it's nice, it's cheap, we could easily mod it, but we don't have a function layer. Now I know, being that the warrior appears to be basically the same keyboard. I, I would be surprised if it did not use the same PCB and MCU and that they've just changed out and allowed for a, allowed for potentiator meter to go there instead of another key slot. And this one has a function layer. I would kind of, I would tend to lean against going with this one because of that minor Thing because anytime you're dealing with a smaller than full size keyboard, you need at least one function layer. Yeah, that's that's the disappointing part of this. Uh, because I mean, like I said, otherwise it'd be a fun kit to to mod, but you need at least the most basic functionality, and it's missing out on that. So even at the price that I got it, I don't even think it's worth it. Uh, now you know, seeing that I don't have function layer. I know personally, I wouldn't be able to use it. So that's where I sit on it. That's my thoughts on the Yusu Master X82 and X83. The X83 is just, just black. It's the same 65%. It still is a keyboard that I think that could be modded to sound good. But without that functional air, it loses a lot of functionality. Now, if this was 12, 15 bucks, that'd be easy. But over 20, nah. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this. You, I keep having to look at it because Yusuo Master, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. I don't know if there's even a right way to pronounce it, but the Yusuo Master X82 wired 65% with no functional errors. I hope you enjoyed the video. A thumbs up if you did, a thumbs down if you didn't. Let me know what I can do to earn your like. I hope that you have an awesome day, and until the next transmission, keep calm and keep on.